Hey there, Gas Gas fans, and welcome to our Tech Talk series. In today's episode, we're going to unravel the mystery behind the key term in motorcycle engineering, anti-squat. This concept is at the heart of our latest generation of enduro and motocross bikes. So let's dive right in it and explore the innovations of the chassis that make our bikes special. What exactly is anti-squat? A term that is frequently used in our new generation of enduro and motocross bikes. In our Model 24 off-road bikes, we've made significant improvements to provide riders with a more stable and feeling under acceleration, especially when exiting tight corners or tackling steep uphills. You might have experienced situations where the front wheel lifts or the bike starts to wheelie during steep ascents. Why does this happen? The force of gravity pulls every part of the bike and the rider toward the center of earth. When you're sitting on the bike with the engine off, the load is almost equally distributed between the front and the rear of the bike. However, during acceleration, while the weight of the rider and the bike remains constant, obviously, the force of acceleration shifts the load or the weight to the rear of the bike. As a result, the bike's sprung mass experiences a reward rotation, causing the front suspension to rise and the rear to squat. In extreme cases, this can lead to the front wheel completely losing contact with the ground, making it impossible to steer while cornering. This behavior of the bike under acceleration is known as squat. Now, what's the opposite of squat? That's where anti-squat comes into play. To achieve more anti-squat and to support the front wheel remains on the ground during acceleration, we made a significant change by repositioning the front sprocket. Typically, the front sprocket remains in a fixed location in our engines. That's why we need to change the engine's position in order to change the position of the front sprocket. So to achieve the desired effect, we titled the engine backwards, resulting in the front sprocket moving down a bit. This shift in the engine's orientation, what results in a lower front sprocket, combined with a consistent position of the swing arm, led to an increased chain pull to the front and a higher rear end. Does this make sense? No worries, we will go into it now. Take a closer look at our drive chain as a whole. In our Model Year 23 bikes, the front sprocket has a slightly higher position. This means the angle of the chain was a bit more like this. When the front sprocket moves down, as in our Model Year 24 bikes, and the chain sprocket stays at the same place, the angle of the chain is also less inclined than our previous generation. This means that there is more force forwards and less force upwards. What happens with the rear suspension? Imagine the rider sitting on the bike, so the spring of the shock gets compressed. Under acceleration, the just mentioned chain pull exerts additional pressure on the spring from below. Since the force upwards is less strong in our Model 24 bikes and more to the front of the bike because of the different angles of the drive chain, the rear suspension has less tendency to be compressed during acceleration. This means the front wheel stays more on the ground and doesn't wheel so quickly, offering riders greater stability and safety. Another crucial aspect of our Model 24 bikes, providing more stability to the end customers, is the new frame design. We've introduced a unified frame for both enduro and motocross models. One noticeable change from our Model 23 bikes is the absence of a direct connection from the main tube to the shock mounting. Reducing the influence of the rear end on the front of the bike during acceleration or hard braking. This enhances stability and control over the front end. Let's move on to the swing arm. We've adopted the same swing arm for the enduro and motocross bikes, making it stiffer in all directions while optimizing material distribution. Despite the increased stiffness, we've managed to reduce the weight of approximately 190 grams through topology optimization. Short digression of what topology optimization means. Topology optimization is a computer-based process that calculates the most favorable basic shape for components under mechanical load. Next part, the subframe. 
Our aluminum subframe, also directly connected to the mainframe, is designed to be lightweight yet robust. The Modlier 24 subframe features a total weight of 1200 grams and the rods are straight for this year's generation. Again, one remarkable aspect is that both Modlier 24 and Duro and Motocross bikes share the same platform. This simplifies things for our end customers and the dealer network. Talking about the subframe, it houses an all new electric compartment, which is identical for both Enduro and Motocross ranges. All through the components inside this electric compartment vary a bit. This compact design minimizes the exposure of wires, sensors and other electronic components to potential damage. Let's remove the bodywork to have a better understanding where it's placed. This part I love the most, because you only need one single tool. Let's go for it. Removing the bodywork. Unscrewing this one. And removing the seat. Now you see where the electric compartment is installed. Time to delve into the specifics of this electric compartment of our two-stroke bikes. We have the battery. It powers the bike's electrical systems. We have the ECU engine control unit, often referred to as the bike's brain. It collects data from various sensors on the bike and adjusts the injection and fuel air mixture accordingly. We have the intake air temperature sensor. It measures the temperature of the incoming air for precise engine management. The air pressure sensor. Monitors changes in air pressure to optimize engine performance when riding up a mountain, for example. We have the start relay, engages the starter motor. The voltage regulator manages the electrical voltage to prevent overcharging. Then we have the rollover sensor. This safety feature automatically shuts off the bike in the event it is turned upside down. However, it doesn't turn off during crashes where the bike merely lies on its side. Why is this the case? So the bike doesn't shut down when motocross riders, for example, perform whips when jumping. We have the OCU, the off-road control unit. This intelligent unit streamlines the electronic systems by replacing separate fuses and relays such as the fan relay, light relay, rear brake light and horn relay, the ignition relay and the fuel pump relay. Notably, the OCU is equipped with a unique LED system. When you start the bike, five LED provide instant status feedback on the rearing and connected electric components. Any issues are indicated by red LEDs making it easy for the end customers to identify and address problems. All outputs are controlled based on signals from the voltage regulator and the engine control unit. In case of overcurrent, outputs are deactivated individually, further enhancing error detection. Green LEDs signal a properly functioning circuit, while red LEDs alert to circuit issues. Now, let's focus on the electric compartment of our four-stroke bikes. Here we have as well the battery, the ECU, engine control unit, the intake air temperature sensor and the rollover sensor. But please note that the voltage regulator varies between motocross and enduro models, each optimized for their respective usage. And we have the capacitor, an additional component specific for the motocross models that will help to store the electrical energy in an electric field. It's important to mention that the off-road control unit, short OCU, is exclusively available for our enduro bikes. This distinction arises from the absence of components like lights, fans, horns and rear brake light relays in motocross bikes, because these competition bikes are not made to be street legal. Additionally, in motocross bikes, the ignition and the fuel pump relay systems operate with the dedicated relays without the LED status feature. Finally, let's talk about our new triple clamps. Our new triple clamps are forged 
and feature a mill strip for a high quality design. Forging makes them more forgiving compared to CNC machined alternatives, allowing for more movement and flex, which can enhance the rider's experience. The new design requires a higher tightening torque for the mounting screws, ensuring a secure fit. We hope you have now a better understanding of what anti-squat means and how our new chassis design improves this important aspect of your riding experience. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of our Gas Gas Tech Talks. Stay tuned for more episodes where we answer your burning questions about our bikes. Anything you're interested in? Please leave us a comment and we try to include it in one of our next episodes. And as always, ride safe and ride with Gas Gas.